Welcome to the release readiness for the Winter 21 release. Hi everyone, my name is Arun Gunari, Senior Product Manager with the Salesforce CPQ and Billing team. And we are excited to show you some of the new features coming in with the Winter 21 release. Now, we might make some forward-looking statements here, but please remember to make all your purchasing decisions based on currently available functionality. So let's dive in. I'm super excited to bring to you an exciting enhancement to the quote line editor. With the Winter 21 release, we are introducing the ability for dynamic control of the quote fields display in the quote line editor, also known as QLE. With this feature, the display of the quote fields can be tailored to each customer's specific needs, for example, by business units or roles. We are confident this feature will help boost sales rep usability, leading to better productivity. We understand that some of our customers have the need to manage the fields display on the quote line editor header by role, department, or other similar needs. By dynamically controlling display, customers can enable their sales users to focus their attention on the key fields necessary for the task at hand. In our example here, we have two sales reps working on the same quote and would like to see a different set of fields. We are introducing an approach that is already consistent in the quote line editor list view. A new special field called header field set name is being introduced that will help manage display of fields in your quote field sets. Customers can choose a few different ways to use the special field to dynamically control quote fields display. They can offer the feature using a user-based control where users pick the field set values they choose to view or a formula-based approach where admins can manage the display of quote fields by using a formula to populate the special field. Next, let's take a look at the workings. First, the admin has to set up. The admin can enable the dynamic display control with a few simple steps, namely creating the special field, picking the right control flexibility, adding the field to the layout and the field sets. For detailed instructions, please refer to the help articles on this topic. Now, let's take a look at the sales users who are leveraging the quote line editor. To see the relevant fields in the header section, they can now leverage this dynamic display control. In this example, the user will leverage the pick list and hit quick save. Field sets will display based on the user selection. In a formula-based control, the header automatically displays based on the formula setup, say by role, department, or something else. This concludes the demo of the enhancement. Next, let me hand it off to my colleague, Varun Bakro. Thanks, Arun. Hi, everyone. I am Varun Bakru, and I'm going to talk about generating billing orders without CPQ. So let's get right into the presentation. Salesforce Billing provides robust order to cash or asset to cash functionality. Previously, it was only available as an add-on to CPQ. We are now enabling Salesforce Clouds, B2B Commerce, Service Cloud, FSL, etc. to create standard orders that Salesforce Billing can provide to order to cash process in context of a customer lifecycle with recurring consolidated invoices, recurring payments, and end-to-end -end lifecycle revenue reporting. For this initiative, we are launching a number of features for Salesforce billing customers. My team and I will go over the features one by one. Let's look at the first functionality that supports standalone orders without CPQ. New with Winter 21 release, Salesforce Billing is multi-cloud and standalone so you can manage all your customer interactions on the world's number one CRM. With Salesforce Billing, now you can integrate with other clouds. With this release, you get all the billing functionality which is decoupled from CPQ. 
Our customers are able to address billing needs with opportunity to start conversations about CPQ later. You have a seamless architecture that works with other clouds where orders can be created with what billing needs to complete the underlying processes. Now customers can create orders with values of their own or by using an API. We have introduced validations that ensure your standalone orders and order products are ready for invoicing. You can now enable them by going to Salesforce package setting and selecting enable order validation. Please note, Salesforce CPQ package needs to be installed to create orders and order products. While you won't use any Salesforce CPQ features or objects, Salesforce billing still runs internal validations against CPQ package for several features and workflows. Let's look at a quick flow of how it will work. Here I'm logged into Salesforce viewing a customer order. Now, orders can come from anywhere, not just CPQ, but also B2B Commerce, Service Cloud, Velocity. This list goes on and doesn't end. This flow shows an order created in B2B Commerce product. Once the standard order is created, we can complete the underlying processes using Salesforce billing. Login as a community user, select the product, add to cart, and then select the delivery address to create a standard B2B order. There are some required fields that are required for completing the underlying billing processes. A user needs to populate quantity, unit prices, charge type, and billing type. Additional fields can be found in the admin guide. Based on the formula shown in the slide, the calculation is done. Now, the invoice is generated based on the order created without CPQ. This invoice could be created by orders that are created by any external systems and other Salesforce applications. That's it for me. Now I'll turn it over to my colleague, Frankly, for more great information. Thanks, Varun. Hi, everyone. My name is Frank, and I'm here to talk to you about customer asset lifecycle management. So let's dive right in. As we interviewed customers, we understand that businesses typically sell more than one type of product. They sell physical goods, subscription software, consumption-based products, as well as many other different types of products. When it comes to subscription software and usage products, those products typically change over time as a result of amendments, renewals, cancellations, etc. As a result, it can be very challenging to have a single source of truth to really understand all the products that your customers have purchased from you and how those products have changed over time. As this is a Salesforce billing feature, you can automate the relationship between invoice lines and the customer asset. From invoice runs or bill now, you can track the outstanding balances and other related invoice line data in context of the customer asset. Let's jump into a quick demo. Here I am on a customer's account page. I see all the information, including what assets this customer owns. You'll see that it includes both physical products as well as a couple subscription products. Let's jump into this product that this customer owns right here. Now I'm on the asset detail page. On the top, there is the name of the asset, the account that owns it, the status, start and end date, and the total amount agreed to across all the amendments and renewals. On the right-hand side, there are details for the related product to record. You can see the description and to see if it's still being sold. Down below, you can see the relationship that this asset has with any other asset. From this, I can tell that this asset was upgraded from a light version back in 2017. In the center area, there is a summary for the asset as of today for the quantity, MRR, amount, and invoice line balance. With subscriptions, things change over time as I may have 800 quantity today, but I may have another 1,000 quantity next month. This section gets updated on a daily basis so that any future changes can get updated. With these graphs, I can easily see the trend in the various states of the asset over the last few years. For example, for the number of seats, I can see that they had 400 licenses in 2018, and in early 2020, they had 600, and as of today, I see 800. I can see the overall trend for this customer and for this product, and I can tell that this is a very healthy relationship. Down below, I can see the monthly recurring revenue, or MRR. I can see how it is $8,000 per month today, 
and that the trend is healthy. If I want to see what events led to this state, I can click the View Changes link. I can see the same view of the trend line and states over time, but now I have access to what we call asset actions. These are individual events that are related to the asset that caused a particular change. For instance, I can see an increased quantity here and also a renewal. For each change, I see the delta change to quantity, MRR, and amount. I can also see a running total for amount as a result of this particular action. I can see back in 2016, there was an initial sale of 300 licenses, which increased the MRR by $3,000 with a total amount added by $36,000. There was also a renewal, which increased the quantity by 50. This increased the MRR by 500 and added $42,000 to the new total amount. Not only do we store the delta values, but we also store the total impact of that delta. For instance, with this change, we can see the new total amount, and you'll be able to track the total amounts as every single new action occurs. I'm going to go ahead and click on an action. Each action can be drilled down into something we call asset action sources, and these connect the asset action with the transactional record. The transactional record could be within Salesforce or an external record. Going back to the asset action page, there are nine business categories where you can categorize your actions based on your business reporting needs. With these, you can identify how much revenue is coming from each category and where you should be investing your resources. For instance, if you notice that there is not a lot of upsell revenue, then it may be worthwhile to invest in upsell opportunities. It is up to your business and how you want to organize these values. Going back to the asset page, I can see any outstanding balances of any invoice lines associated with this asset. If I click View Invoice Lines, I can see any posted invoice lines that were generated from this asset via bill now or invoice run. Here I can see the due date, the amount billed, the payments against the invoice line, the remaining balance, and days past due. That's it for me. Now I'll turn it over to Pranav for another great feature. Thanks, Frank. Hi, everyone. I'm Pranav Pokhril, and I'm excited to introduce you to the finance logging and as of balances feature that will be available from the Winter 21 release with Salesforce Billing Growth and Plus. Let's jump right into the presentation. CPQ and billing are all about reimagining customer engagement on Salesforce for the code to cash business process. After all, quoting is not just about company selling, it's about customers buying. It's about customers receiving accurate, timely invoices so they can make timely payments and close the customer engagement loop. Salesforce is amazing at driving the customer engagement but a huge value prop of Salesforce billing is to make the integration to downstream accounting systems as easy as possible. This is where finance logging helps. Finance logging allows customers to log your Salesforce billing financial data in one centralized location, allowing you to simplify your ERP integration, track financial balance changes over time, and improve your finance reconciliation process. You can export your billings and cash data to your accounting systems from one central location using finance transactions. Customers also have the ability to easily understand not only the current balances, but also balances as of any date using the finance balance snapshots. This will allow you to identify and act on open balances efficiently and help with the accounting close process that you undertake in your accounting system. Finance logging will launch with an API that will allow you to bring in financial data from Salesforce billing or external systems via your own integration. Please be aware that we are not launching the automated transfer of your Salesforce billing data into finance logging. Let's jump into a quick demo. Here, I have a customer invoice generated using Salesforce billing. The invoice has four lines. With finance logging, you can now track the relevant finance transactions resulting from these customer transactions in one central location with the information that your finance team really cares about. Let's take a look. Here, I can see the finance transactions corresponding to the posted invoice and invoice lines. I also see that the taxes on the invoice lines are split into separate transactions. This allows tracking taxes and the impact of those taxes against separate GL accounts much easier and also makes it easier to report on taxes separately. 
Let's take a look at one of these finance transactions in more detail. The finance transaction will include details related to the customer transaction, such as where the finance transaction originated from, the action that led to the creation of the finance transaction, and any relevant amount and date information. The finance transaction can also include information relevant to your accounting system integration, including credit and debit GL accountant name and finance period date and status. With these finance transactions, customers can track the impact each of these transactions have on your books at different times and extract information to facilitate your accounting close process. I'll now go back and collect payments against the invoice we saw earlier. I'll collect a full payment using a customer card that's already stored in Salesforce billing. Here's the payment that was successfully collected. Once the payment is made, I can now see that additional finance transactions have been created. These transactions were created from corresponding customer transactions that were impacted once the payment was made. In addition to the transaction corresponding to the payment, I also see finance transactions related to the payment allocations and the invoice lines that were impacted. By logging these transactions, I am now able to capture the financial impact of the payment on the invoice and invoice lines as well. In addition to the finance transactions, we've introduced the ability for customers to track balance changes over time for top-level Salesforce billing entities, such as invoices and payments, using the finance balance snapshot. Here, I can see that the invoice balance changed from almost $2,000 to $0 once I made a payment to settle the invoice. With the ability to track balance changes over time, not only can customers track currently open balances, but also track balances as of any date in the past. Finance transactions and finance balance snapshots can be reported using standard Salesforce reports. Here's an example of a finance transaction report for the current fiscal quarter grouped by the GL account associated with the finance transaction. Similarly, here's an example of a finance balance snapshot report. The finance balances are grouped by customer account and the unique source record in this example. Like any standard Salesforce report, you have the flexibility to create reports based on the metrics and grouping most relevant for your reconciliation needs. In addition, you can also use a different analytics tool, such as Tableau, to track balance changes over time and understand as of balances. Here, I can see several invoices with a $0 balance as of today. However, if I change the as of date to the end of last month, I can see the same invoices with open balances. This information is relevant if you're trying to perform the accounting close for last month and reconcile what open balances were open at the end of last month in Salesforce. We are excited to launch this new capability with Salesforce Billing that will allow our customers easier ways to integrate with downstream accounting systems, as well as provide better visibility and tracking of financial balance changes over time. That wraps things up for Salesforce CPQ and Billing for Winter 21. Thanks to my teammates for the great presentations. If you have any questions, let's keep the conversation going in the release readiness community, where all trailblazers meet to be release ready. Really